Greetings, class. You have reached the Human K channel. Today, we'll talk about center of control, an interesting idea in psychology. It means how much a person believes in their own deeds and how much other things affect their lives. Let's start with where this idea came from. Julian Rotter was born in Brooklyn, New York, in 1916. He is a very well-known psychologist. Because his father lost his business during the Great Depression, he became interested in psychotherapy and psychology. After a lucky chance meeting with Alfred Adler, Rotter moved his major at Brooklyn College from chemistry to psychology. Rotter got a PhD from Indiana University in 1951, even though there was prejudice against Jewish teachers. During World War II, he was a psychologist for the U.S. Army. Later, he worked at a state mental hospital in Connecticut. Rotter's career took off at Ohio State University, where he came up with his method to personality based on social learning. Rotter's research program at Ohio State attracted many talented graduate students who went on to have great careers. In 1963, he went to work at the University of Connecticut at Storrs. In 1988, the American Psychological Association gave him the Distinguished Scientific Contribution Award in honor of his great work. Rotter's idea of locus of control was one of his most important accomplishments. It shows the difference between people who think they are in charge of their own deeds and those who think outside forces are in charge of their lives. These differences have a big effect on behavior and many other things in life. People who have an internal locus of power think that their rewards come from what they do and how good they are. They feel like they are in charge of their lives, do better at work, are less likely to be swayed by other people, and are more aware of surrounding cues. This makes people feel less anxious, better about themselves, happier, and healthier in both mind and body. Rotter made the internal external scale, which is a self-report survey with forced choice options that measures locus of control. Also, children's locus of control can be measured with the children's Nowicki Strickland internal external scale, which has been translated into many languages. Different versions of these scales look at specific actions and how they relate to where people feel they have control. Now, let's look at some interesting results about where people feel they have control. Studies have shown that girls tend to have a higher internal center of control than boys do when they are young. Most college students have an internal center of control, and cognitive training has been shown to improve this. Comparing different ethnic groups has shown some interesting differences. For example, Africans who were born in Africa, Africans who were born in America, and African-American teens tend to score better on the external locus of control test than American-born whites. But socioeconomic status does play a part, because a higher socioeconomic status is linked to a higher sense of control from within. Locus of power is also affected by cultural differences. Collectivist cultures, like those in Asia, tend to be more focused on the outside world and put more emphasis on how the group depends on and helps each other. But as Asians learn more about American society, they may change their way of thinking about who is in charge. Now, we'll dive into the fascinating world of Rotter's ideas and look at some of the most interesting things that have been learned from study in this area. The idea of locus of control is one of the most important parts of Rotter's theory. People with a high internal locus of control tend to have a number of positive traits and results in different areas of life. Let's look at these results in more depth. First, people with a high internal locus of control are more likely to live in societies that value individualism and wealth. These societies stress personal responsibility and independence, which gives people a sense that they are in charge of their own lives. When it comes to how well someone does in school, study shows that people with an internal locus of control tend to do well. Because they believe in themselves and what they can do, they work harder and stay with their school goals longer. In the digital age we live in now, online addiction is becoming a bigger problem. But studies have shown that people who have a strong sense of their own power are less likely to become hooked to the internet. Because they believe they have power over what they do, they can better control what they do online. An internal locus of power is also linked to being happy with your job and with your life. People who feel like they have control over their jobs and lives in general tend to be happier and more fulfilled. Also, people with a strong sense of personal control tend to have low levels of anxiety and depression. 
Their opinion that they can change things and handle difficult situations helps them deal with stress better and keep their mental health in good shape. Another important area where internal locus of control plays a big part is physical health. Research has shown that people with a high internal locus of control tend to have better overall physical health, such as lower blood pressure and a lower chance of getting heart disease. Studies have also found a link between where parents place their sense of control and where their children place their sense of control. Parents who do well on the internal control test tend to have kids who do well on the same test. These are just a few of the most important things that have been learned about Rotter's ideas. There is a lot of data that shows that people with a high internal locus of control tend to do well in many different areas of life. People who have a stronger internal locus of control are more likely to be mentally healthy and able to adapt to different situations. They also act in ways that are good for their health, like taking care of themselves and being more careful about their health. During childhood, a child's sense of who is in charge depends a lot on how their parents act and how they raise them. Understanding where we feel we have control can tell us a lot about our beliefs, actions, and general well-being. It gives us a way to think about ourselves and gives us the power to take charge of our lives. I want each of you to learn more about this idea and think about how it might affect your own journey. As we keep learning about psychology, I want each of you to think about your own locus of control and how it might affect your thoughts, actions, and general health. Adopting an internal locus of control can give you the power to take care of your life and work towards success and happiness.